Oh. Oh. Don't want to be making tons of noise. I do wonder if that's a statue, though. I think that might... I think that's a statue. I'm gonna risk making tons of noise and just throw a grenade. Okay, we need to throw another one. Oh my god. Did I get enough of them? I think I want to leave that open. <laughs> Spirit water. Drinking from faucets restores a small amount of mana. side. This place is too cool looking to stare at like this. We gotta look at it like this, right? Oh my god. Taxidermy lovers. Vengeance. Build up adrenaline much faster. Penalty, adrenaline takes less time to cool down. in Our Lady's studio. It'll be ready when she calls. Hmm, but I don't think Delilah will return this way. When she calls us, it will be to Dunwall Tower. Probably true. Evie, may I confess something to you? Promise not to tell the others. Of course. You can always confide in me. When I was in the studio, I painted the mark on my hand just to see. It was foolish, I know, but I couldn't help myself. Never be ashamed of your ambition. It's why she chose you. Thank you. Your words are always exactly what I need, Evie. If only my birth sisters had been more like you. Well, if they had, they'd still be alive, wouldn't they?
many traps in this place. This is the lamp in the studio. Oh my god. Check, check, check. I think that was all of the launchers. Delilah's journal. Now that the painting is finished, I will sit in young lady Emily's skin and wear her face like a mummer's mask. Havelock and his lick spittles will put the child on the throne, but it is me they will be crowning. Delilah, the kitchen girl from Dunwall Tower. They called me Sokolov's apprentice, but whose paintings reached through to the spirit? Mine. They will never know their blunder but I will be sure to whisper it into their ears at their executions. My followers will bear the lantern to the gallery in order to open the way to the void. There I will use the painting to complete the ritual. My walk into Emily's flesh must be undisturbed. The ritual has other uses, which I will explore over time. Any image made by my hand could serve as the focal point for the spell. I imagine one of my enemies as a still life, imprisoned in a bowl of fruit without amusement. <laughs> so Delilah wants to use Emily to become Empress. It's pretty brilliant. Lantern is apparently used to open a, uh, open a gate through one of Delilah's paintings. Wait, could I do them from the front? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try. Oh, it started moving because I got close to it, right? Anything that is around me enters my my time. We have three mana potions left.
Anybody else hear that? Damn, they didn't. Wait for them to finish their animation. <laughs> Daughter of Tivia, excerpt from a theater play. Young Lady Amelia in the back garden, Duchess. I do not know of the world beyond these garden walls, but do not mistake my lack of experience for fear or for an absence of desire. If I've avoided you, it is because of the warning your name carries. Duchess Colley, bending a rose to her face, inhaling the scent. And what warning is that, my dear Amelia? Young Lady Amelia turning her back on the Duchess. I believe you know my meaning. Your father's tales are still the subject of parlor gossip. Duchess Colley, stepping up close. And do those stories excite you? Tell me, girl. I'm a friend. Young Lady Amelia, hesitating. Duchess Colley, I... Yes, I confess they do. In my youth, I had a copy of the tales of Prince Colossar. I read them late into the night. Duchess Colley, speaking into her ear, as did I. Young Lady Amelia, leaning back into her embrace. But he was your father? Duchess Colley, stroking her neck. They're just stories, Amelia. Fire for the imagination. Young Lady Amelia breathing deeply. Duchess, will you teach me to kiss? Duchess Collie, cooing softly. I will, but have you never kissed another? Abiri, a rose gardener, emerging from the hedges, stammering. My ladies, I swear to you, I did not intend to spy. Forgive me, but I was pruning the hedge and could not find a way to interrupt. Duchess Collie extending a hand. We forgive you. But as punishment, I command you to stay and to come closer. <laughs> Young Lady Amelia shocked, brows furrowed in irritation. But he is a servant, Duchess. Duchess Collie, pulling at each of them, drawing them closer to her. And serve us he will, Young Amelia. Girl, that's very creepy. That's... Ew. That turned real gross real quick. The Shadow on Bitterleaf, excerpt from a longer work of fiction. Finding my way to the feeble light of the dying fire, I saw her working. A large needle moved in her hand, following precise esoteric patterns, knots and loops of seamstress craft from ancient days. Beneath her needle, his body clenched and shuddered, shaking the wooden table. A morbid fascination pushed me closer until she turned her blank face toward me, resting the needle in his flesh. With a refined tone, she addressed me. So you are the lover, I presume. You too have been unfaithful, and it is now your turn to be mended. That's terrifying. I want to read that book. Who are they? They don't look like a witch. They look maybe injured? Oh no. Just realized. Skulls. Skulls, skulls, skulls. I'm 
bringing the elixir again this week? Really, Winter? You ought to have your mind on more important things. I'm surprised no one heard that. Oink. the look of the water caustics or reflections or whatever the proper name is for these Second solution. Excerpt from a series of newspaper articles from prominent natural philosophers by Piero Joplin. It is through no fault of my own that the average citizen has expressed a preference for Sokolov's elixir over my own formula, sold as Piero's remedy, a name I did not choose if you must know the truth. The public has spoken its usual message of idiocy, spending their coin as a means of selecting Sokolov's formula over mine, which I believe to be equal if not superior. Much has been made over the popularity of these concoctions as a means of resisting this remarkable new plague. I say remarkable because this strain works with an efficiency we have not seen in the history of the Empire. This plague, now making its way through the city of Dunwall, is unrivaled in its effectiveness. I have studied it within the blood of those so afflicted and it is nearly perfect, elegant in fact. And while it is true that Pierre's remedy and Sokolov's elixir are known to protect the body against the plague equally, my own has properties, not fully understood, which relate to the mind itself and the spirit. And it is in this way that my formula wins out. Here is where one should pay attention to this contest. For you see, Sokolov's elixir, with its emphasis on the brute animal body, is a crass goo better suited for livestock. The subtle and secret variants in the key ingredients making a Piero's remedy ensure that it works on the higher functions that separate humankind from the mindless, blue-jawed hagfish swimming in the Renhaven River. I love this rivalry between the two potion makers. Here we go. So I could just bump into my own darts in midair to make them shoot and actually hit them. That's that's so cool. I didn't quite realize that. I knew that if I touched things, they came into my time, but I didn't realize if I just moved forward an inch that I would hit my own arrows in midair.
Delilah's orders. If ordered, the lantern be placed in my studio in the West Wing. Okay, we've already read that. Conan blood sausage. Nasty. Swift stalker. That sounds good. If your weapons are sheathed, your speed is boosted. I don't think I ever sheath my weapons. To be honest, I don't even know how and I don't want to. The Blight of the Cobblestone, excerpt from street pamphlet drafted by anonymous intellectuals. Action is necessary if the Empire is to stand against the juggernaut of what is commonly called industrial progress. The momentum of this hungry beast requires equal vigor simply to halt its destructive advance. No action against the industrialization of our nation states can be deemed too extreme when we understand what is at stake. The advancement of industry infects every aspect of our lives, and hazardous conditions assault the citizens of Dunwall daily. Workers are treated as disposable cogs in the machine, sacrificing their lives in the name of faster construction, mass assembly, and greater profits. Should those of us in opposition to these trends not sacrifice themselves in the fight against our unfeeling oppressor? Will we be satisfied when our children ask what a pasture is? And the best we can do is to point to a cobblestone street, black with the filth of mechanical production. Will we struggle in the coming years to recall a time when we actually made our pies by hand, or baked bread in the ways of our grandmothers? What is at stake today are our very cultures, from the cold north of Tivia, down through Morley and Gristol, all the way to the warm south of Circonos. All men and women with a love for our ways must stand against these changes. I love that there's this hookah here and some beds and snacks and stuff. They're just, they're just a bunch of witches in the attic smoking and eating snacks and reading some kind of Karl Marxian book. That's cool. <laughs> I love that image. Painting ritual. The painting of the possession target must be positioned above the altar. After preparing the ritual, the performer must lay on the altar. If the ritual has been prepared correctly, the performer will then enter into the body of the subject of the painting. Warning, the subject of the painting must be the possession target. Any other painting may trap the performer of the ritual. Oh, you don't say. Can I switch out the paintings? Wouldn't they notice? I've got two runes. Anything I care about? Shadow kill. No, I don't I don't care. I only have four sleep darts. That's not even enough for all of them. Christ. Mm -mm. Hmm. Stun mines? Choke dust? Choke dust doesn't 
take up a very large area. Like, it's a pretty small area of effect. I could go in and choke them all with slow down time. It'll probably take maybe two um, mana potions. Although, if they're all just going to separate on their own, maybe I don't need to. Sometimes doubt is kind of flamboyant. We don't know much about it. No, we don't. No women in Dowd's house, except the one, that Billy Lurk. And she was very careful. Everyone's dies. Ooh. Scares me when they teleport. Where do they go? Oh. Is the new sister settled in? Will she last? I yeah, I'm sick of hearing about it. get it up there if I just do that no oh oops are they dead now I th how do I tell if they're dead it says unconscious this doesn't say unconscious does that okay there's a blood pool they're dead <laughs> All right, Bonnie wants to be there. You can be there. Has she mentioned me? Yes, of course, my love. Delilah's musings. I worked in my studio until late last night and completed the painting of Emily. When Dowd kidnapped her, I was terrified that he might already know what I was planning, but it seems I overestimated him. He turned her over to the conspirators. What a fool. Once young Emily assumes the throne, I'll already be looking out of those lovely brown eyes. What might... 
Oh, wow, I got lucky. Very satisfying. One by one, they sleep. Oh, fuck. Brigmore Manor has such a cool atmosphere. It's a really cool level. Oh! Whoopsie! I think they might know I'm here. Perhaps. Before I, like, do the final thing, is there anything else to do? It's the only task. I guess not. Let's make a save. Delilah's notes. Brunhild came to me last night while I was in my studio in the West Wing, finishing the ritual painting of young Lady Emily. She informed me that one of our girls allowed herself to get caught and interrogated at Coldridge Prison. Nevertheless, it seems doubt is oblivious to my plans. Oh, 
Well, I guess switching out the painting isn't something that's going to happen. Although, there's no painting actually there? Or does it have to be illuminated for it to appear? You have many talents, Dowd, and they've served you. Delilah's talents are quite different. She creates images, but she does more. She captures spirit. She insinuates her will into her subject, whatever it is. We're witnessing her masterpiece, and perhaps yours as well. I gave you Delilah's name, and you followed it to this moment. You see now what hangs in the balance. Emily's life, Delilah's ambition, an empire in the act of crumbling. In your long life, I've rarely seen you act with such consummate grace. I give my mark sparingly, and I don't play favorites. But I will watch this with unusual attention. <laughs> Leap into the void. All right. Oops. But you've really got Delilah. Not a talking statue, I don't think. Also, probably no point in sneaking around. Non-lethal, find a suitable replacement painting. Okay, so the replacement painting thing is still possible. Emily Caldwin, daughter of Jessamine Caldwin. Let's just stop time and run over here. I was wondering, like, if I replace the painting, aren't they going to notice? Yeah, they do, but I don't... I don't understand. If they're going to complete the ritual, then... If it's completed, then haven't they already entered the painting and entered Emily's body? But apparently there's a point in time where they could have completed the ritual, and then I could have replaced the painting. I don't really get how that would work. Well, I can still do the non-lethal way, right? I can render them unconscious, but... Unfortunately, I'm not going to trap them in the painting. Unless I load. It's way more interesting if I load. 
I have loaded my game to avoid consequences so infrequently. But in this case, I think I just didn't understand what the game wanted me to do. Yeah, what does it say exactly? It just says replace it. But I do have to wait, right? Emily Caldwin, daughter of Jessamine Caldwin, heir to the Empire of the Isles. I call out to you from the void. I call you with ochre from Morley, carmine beetle shells, zirconian lazurite, viridian bile. The tones of your flesh I tempered with pandician chalk. The same loom that spun the fabric of your dresses made this canvas. I made my brushes from the hairs of your own skin. Emily, you cannot ignore me. My power is too deep. My reach too long. Perhaps I do it now? Brush touches paint. Brush touches canvas. Brush touches... Yes, I think so. Because now they're looking away. And now yes, they haven't noticed. I breathe your breath. I can Our feel old artist, what narcissist. Bright mornings in the pub. I feel the cold night air of the ruin where you sleep, and the stink of the river. Image strikes the eye. I touches the mind. Mind touches the void. Your love for Corvo Atari and your lost mother. For your caretaker, Callista. I feel your fear in the night. Your hunger to learn. To become someone important. My hunger too. My fear. You are becoming mine. We are nearly finished. Close your eyes, Emily. Sleep forever. Feel the void open beneath you. Make room for me. Give in to me, Emily. Give in to me now! Paint flows. Blood flows. Life goes. Out with the old, in with the new. You've lived in his bones long enough. Sweet young girl. Finished. It is complete. I am. What? What's happening? This is all wrong. What am I becoming? Outsider blood. Is this some trick? Go! Emily's okay, yes. Hostiles killed only two. What were the two? I remember the one I accidentally dropped when I tried to throw them into the opening and then they fell down a couple floors. <laughs> I don't remember the other one. Anyway, overall chaos, low. 
Four to four runes, three out of four bone charms, three to three corrupted charms, and 1,600 out of 2,000 of the money. Nice. Pretty proud of myself. No one will ever know exactly what it took to save Emily Caldwin from a living death as Delilah's puppet. No one except the outsider who watches everything and thinks his own dark thoughts and speaks to few in any generation. I've learned that our choices always matter to someone, somewhere. And sooner or later, in ways we can't always fathom, the consequences come back to us. I came from Sirkonos to Dunwall as a boy, made my living as a killer, one of the few who've heard the outsider's voice. I murdered an empress, but saved her daughter, who will one day rule the Empire. Those were my choices. I'm ready for what comes. blood on his hands. It's a shame Corvo doesn't know the real story, isn't it? How in these last days you passed through Coldridge Prison like a shadow, dared the tangles of Dunwall's underworld, and walked out unscathed, outwitted one of the greatest witches in a generation, all with consummate care and skill. How you saved Emily Caldwin, daughter of the Empress, first of her name, and no one will ever know. But how does it end for Dowd, the hired killer, the murderer, the savior of the Empire? It's up to Corvo now. I presume that's the good end? Let's finish with some thoughts about the Brigmore Witches and the other DLC as well. Let's just talk about both of them together. I love them. They filled in a really interesting bit of the backstory for the Dishonored universe. They go really well together. I can't imagine playing them separately, like one and not the other. They're definitely meant to be paired. I like that it feels like it doesn't try to redeem Dowd as a character, and even Dowd doesn't think that they're really worthy of redemption, because they're not. They, they managed to redeem themselves, at least with this ending that I chose, saving Emily Caldwin, they managed to redeem themselves just the tiniest bit compared to everything they've done in their life. It's barely anything, and certainly they're not a good person now. But they've just done one tiny little thing in their life that actually really isn't that tiny, and was actually genuinely good, and saved, saved a young girl from death, basically. I'm pretty sure that's basically what would happen if you're kicked out of your own body. Would Emily of Cal Caldwin have gone to, like, the void and just been stuck there? I don't know. I'm just going to call it death. Yeah, they saved their life. And, of course, they also killed Emily Caldwin's mother. So, really a give and take kind of thing. But, I don't know. I just think Dowd is kind of an interesting character. And I appreciate that they're not portrayed as a good person, because they're not. All right. That has been the Dishonored DLC. I'm really glad I played it. Thank you, everybody, for telling me that I should play the DLC before starting Dishonored 2, because 
If you all haven't hadn't have told me that, I probably would have just started with Dishonored 2 right away. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it. And next thing I'll be playing in the Dishonored universe is Dishonored 2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 